Hello, American Society of Linguistics. Yes, I've got a question. I just want to know how gray is spelled. G-R-A-Y, that's what I thought. That's uh, Now, when I see G-R-E-Y, that's like gray. Is that what it is? That's gray, too. How can you have gray have two spellings? I'm looking at it here. It, it's an amateur radio thing. It says gray line versus gray line. Uh, or is that gray line? It, gray line. Why can't people settle on just one way of spelling it? Oh, the A is American and the E is British. Well, now, wait a minute. I've got a, a picture right here of a Greyhound bus, and they spell it with an E. Are they a British company? They're American, you say. Well, why don't they spell it the American way? Are they un-American? Hello, Woggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And today's question comes from Jason Reagan. Would I benefit from the other side of gray line passing over Central and West Australia? You know, VK5, VK6, and VK8. I am thinking no. Here's where I'm so confused and hoping you can make sense out of this. Because once the gray line starts to turn back down up around Alaska, that's a, I'm thinking would only be, benefit Northwest Canada. Is this a duct? Please fix my thinking. This is from Jason, who says best wishes. Okay, let's take a look at what gray line is. First of all, there are two spellings of it, and they mean the same thing. Gray line is the American spelling, gray line is the British spelling, although everybody mixes them up all the time, okay? It's the same thing. Now, let's take a look at what the gray line is. It is the band of twilight that goes all the way around the Earth. The sun hits up to here, and it's either sunset or sunrise right there. Okay, and then this is twilight, twilight right here. Now, if you look on a standard map, the kind that we're used to, we see the gray line doing funny things like this. Now, note that it's not bending, okay? It's following the curvature of the Earth and that's it. It's bending because of the way we warp the world when we put it in a map like that. Before I, I jump into why this is important, let me just show you this. There are three versions of twilight. Very few people know this. When the sun is six degrees below the horizon, this distance here, whether the sun is coming up or the sun is going down, is called civil twilight. Civil twilight is defined as the sun has gone down over the horizon, but you can still get around. I mean, you can see, you can read, you can do all the kinds of things that you need to do. Now, for the next six degrees down, it's called nautical twilight, because even though it's a little bit too dark to read a printed page, you can still see the edge of the horizon if you're out at sea. You can see the edge of the horizon, so you can take your readings that require seeing how far you are from the horizon, okay? And whatever nautical people do with, with that information. Now, the next one down is called astronomical twilight, and that goes all the way to 18 degrees below the horizon. Now, what astronomical twilight is, is you still get some of the sun's light, so fainter stars are not visible till you actually get the sun all the way down 18 degrees below the horizon, and it's then night, and you can see the stars very clearly without interference from the sun. Now, I will point out that the one, and this is DX Atlas, where I got these charts, this is actually nautical twilight. And you can set it up, up in the settings up here, to say whether you want civil twilight, nautical twilight, or astronomical twilight, okay? Right here, we're in probably close enough to be civil twilight. Now, the differences matter because like, for example, I'm a, a sport pilot with a license from the FAA. I can take off and land during civil twilight, but once it becomes nautical twilight, I can't. It's, that's breaking the, breaking the rules. Now, what happens here? DX Engineering has a blog called On All Bands and Amateur Radio Blog by DX Engineering. They put up a new post every uh, business day. And this one's on the gray line. 
the twilight zone of amateur propagation. And they have a chart here that shows an immediate change between day and night. I'm going to use a slightly different diagram. I'm going to use this one right here. Now see, at this particular time, the twilight is changing the F layer, which is there uh, during the night. It's the F2 and the F1 layer during the day. Notice the F2 layer is a little higher. The D layer is absorptive, so if you're down in here, you will get the absorption. The E layer is kind of sporadic sometimes, but if you're like right here between and your radio signal goes up this way, okay, see it pretty much skips the D layer, so you don't get the absorption of the D layer, but you do get daytime-ish type propagation from the F1 and F2 layer before they merge for the night at the single F layer, all right? It doesn't matter where you are in the gray line. Again, this is not a curved line. It's a straight line that goes around the Earth. And you can get some very interesting propagation on 160, 80, and 40 meters, and to some extent on the higher bands. But you can get some fantastic propagation along here because all these stations all the way around the world are in that same gray line. So they're all seeing this effect. Every single station in the gray line is seeing this effect. So you can get some phenomenally long distance uh, propagation in this. Like for example, I set this back so just so it would show me in, in th that. But look what's in here besides Antarctica. You're picking up Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and so on. You're picking up China. And now Japan's a little bit in the dark here, but this is what you get. Now, as the seasons change, this is a gray line on August 13th. Now, if you go six months from now, the gray line is going to look like this with the sun here and night over here. So this sweeps across a great deal of the country. So you can look up on the gray line and see when a station that you may need, for example, in Africa, might be in the gray line the same time that you are. Now, on the spring equinox and the vernal equinox, the gray line is straight up and down. Okay, but that means it's also straight up and down over here, too, so you can pick up some stations over there. DXers know this is a secret. Look this up on Google. Describe the changes in the ionosphere during the transition between night and day and the effect, and I put the gray line effect. Okay, it's a band around the Earth. The sun rises and sets, the ionosphere undergoes a transition. The D layer dissipates rapidly on the sunset side. It hasn't yet formed on the sunset side. Simultaneously, the NF layers remain ionized for a longer time after sunset and begin to ionize earlier. So this creates a temporary window where lower frequencies experience minimal D layer, but can still be reflected by the E and F layers. Okay? Now, if you want to look this up, we have put the URL for this in the text below the video so that you can go there and find that. Is gray line a duct thing? No. Gray line is when both you and the other station are experiencing this transition from day to night or night back to day. Okay? Every station in here, some of these are seeing it as dawn, some of these are seeing it as dusk, but they're all experiencing the change in the ionosphere at the change at the same time. So it's not a duct. It's not like a troposcatter or something like that. It's just a normal transition from day to night or night to day. And you happen to be able to sneak through while you and the other station are in the gray line and you can talk to each other fairly easily. So Jason, I hope that helps and gives you an idea of what you can try and do. You, if you don't have an 80 meter or 160 meter antenna, try your 40 meter antenna. Try calling CQDX during the entire period of the gray line uh, for civil or nautical twilight. And that would be just as the sun goes below the horizon, things in the ionosphere start to change and it takes a certain amount of time to get to the point where that goes away and then you're into regular nighttime uh, propagation. 
Now, if you'd like to help support this channel, I got a really good way for you to do it. Go to patreon.com slash ke0og, pick a level that works for you. Uh, the lowest level is two dollars, just two dollars a month. If you sign up for any paid level on Patreon, I am going to send you one time when you join a real, live, genuine two dollar bill. And yes, this is legal currency. I'll go down to the bank and get a bunch of these so I have them and make sure that your address is in there or at least your call sign is because I can look up your address if I just have your call sign. And we'll have one of these on the way to you that you can show people and say, hey, I'm an electron level supporter of KE0OG. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.